Hi Sagittarius and welcome to your October 2020 general tarot forecast. This is Sky here to talk about the energies coming in for your sign in the month of October. I really am not surprised to see what's coming up for you guys looking at this uh, spread. Um, we've got uh, a few really, really great celebratory energies coming in, and we've also got a few, um, you know, energies of endings and closing a book or completing a certain chapter of your life coming in as well. Um, what a crazy year to be a Sagittarius, am I right? Like 2020 for Sagittarius, that's like a crazy story. I mean, you guys could write a book about the things that you've encountered during this year. You know, I've talked about how um, every 12 years, Sagittarius has a bit of an existential crisis or a bit of a, you know, crisis of purpose. And it feels like so much is on the line. It feels like, you know, that guardian angel or that luck that you're always having just is not so accessible, but it is. Okay. You'll be surprised when you look back at this time about how, um, all of your instincts and how all of your preferences were actually really aligned with the best possible outcome. But you can kind of get into 2020 and like October of 2020 and start to think, okay, I now see I want something very different from life. I now see that my goals and my purposes are aligning me to make different choices than I ever thought that I would make. And you can get a bit of a temptation in this month to just throw things away or to just finish or to just, you know, kind of almost suspend disbelief about what you're actually contributing to or about what you're actually creating. And what this last quarter of 2020 really for Sagittarius is demanding is the acceptance or the understanding of what you're actually manifesting or creating in the world. Um, it really starts to make things clear, like fine print detail. I'm seeing like maybe contracts for Sagittarius, um, fine print details about what you're doing, um, committing to a certain period of time, committing to doing something for a certain period of time. Uh, perhaps you're buying a new house or you're, you know, um, financing something. It's, it's very legal energy, Libra season for Sagittarius especially. And it's kind of like uh, this isn't usually on the table for Sagittarius. You know, you're usually much more free and much more unrestricted and you just kind of dabble in what you like. But this year kind of asks you to make a commitment and it uh, in Libra season starts to get very... Um, it's it's executed it's it's done you know things are like put in place and things are legitimized in libra season and it leads up to capricorn season where sagittarius really decides what it's doing with like the next 12 years of its life you know and then it like blasts off into january of 2020 and it's like oh my gosh it's a complete like you don't even have to think about these things anymore. Like these things are just done. They're complete. And that's kind of what you want to strive for in October of 2020, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves with things, but you want to kind of use this time because I bet you have more time than you realize, or you have more freedom than you realize, but within that you want to fill it with something of importance or something that matters. Um, and I would try to get everything in order, you know, all of your business stuff, all of your, you know, financial stuff, all of your you know, relationships as well, you know, something r relating to a marriage or relating to a philosophy or not even a philosophy, but more of like a binding new idea about how you pull in relationships or how you pull in love. All of these things are kind of up for restatement or for um, like uh, legislating a new type of Sagittarian ideal. It sounds crazy, but this is kind of what Jupiter and Capricorn is for Sagittarius. You know, Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius and it's transiting and has just gone direct and it's debilitated sign of Capricorn. So it's like a, it's not the most fortuitous auspicious year for Sagittarius, but I also don't feel that it's inauspicious or that it's unfortuitous. It's somewhere in between and Sagittarius with their own two hands are deciding what they want it to be. So it starts to get better in October. Okay, Sagittarius, it really does. You know, mark my words, things will feel like they're getting more into motion. You know, Jupiter in Aquarius is going to be a great auspicious, beneficial transit for you, but it's about bridging that gap. It's about getting from here to there, getting things in order as much as possible. And, and you know, we can kind of get all worried. We can start to be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm doing things right. I don't know if this is the right path for me. I don't know, you know, if, if I'm ever going to find that relationship again. You know, am I going to be forever single? All these 
dilemmas that is like very possible for a Sagittarius right now. Um, you got to fix it here and you got to fix these things and you got to put it in writing and you got to make it tangible and real so that it's a non-issue in the future. Okay. Most signs have to deal with this type of dilemma all the time, but for Sagittarius, it's like once every six or 12 years that you really have to deal with this stuff. Um, so you might as well get it right now. Uh, maybe even get some advice. So having an advisor, having a counselor, having a lawyer, having a agent, having, you know, you don't want to go crazy with all that because you can make weird connections, but second opinions are really good right now, okay? Um, but also I feel that there are many Sagittarius who already have the capability to do it all themselves too. It just depends on how comfortable you feel. So something I've been trying to talk about a lot for October Sages is um, the need for progress and the need for the change, the, the inevitable change of certain experiences or certain mindsets, okay? We are in Libra season in the beginning of October, and it always presents this quick, succinct opportunity to shift over, to make things easier, to make things more direct, to weigh the balance, to really weigh out, you know, where your time is going, where your energy is going, you know, how much energy it takes to do any given thing. And it's really surprising to see how much you can make things more precise, how much you can optimize the different energy expenditures that you have in your life. Um, so it's very entrepreneurial, really. I mean, it is. And this is really going to expand next year for you guys, but it's already starting to kind of come in. And like I said, you want to be cautious right now. You want to really uh, wrap your mind around everything that you're signing up for or everything that you're doing. Um, again, it's not a time to have like a gambling mentality or a time to just, just you know, put things out or just, you know, um, be very careless. Um, you'll be surprised, like you can actually kind of more so access that next year, but you're already starting to be able to realize that you can do a lot of the things in your life much more easily, or you can really organize everything or clean everything up to a degree that everything that you do is easier. And yes, it's possible this month that everything is much more difficult just to show you how much more easy things could be. You know, any tendency to spend a lot more time doing something than it requires, you know, any type of attention deficit tendency to, um, you know, have like one task in front of you that's only going to take 30 minutes or an hour, but three or four hours pass because every three or four minutes we're scrolling over to YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you know, um, it's really important to start to have a very uh, task oriented mentality and to really get things done and then enjoy the rest of your day. You know, Sag needs to be enjoying things in Libra season and Virgo season, you know, in August and September should have really actually already set this up for you, but sometimes it bleeds over a little bit and, and we have catching up to do. You know, every season we can sometimes still be dealing with the previous season if we're catching up. Um, so yeah, I definitely feel that early in mid-October it's really important for Sages to, you know, really optimize how they're putting out their energy, okay? Um, and to really think about how much time they're spending uh, considering their exes or considering the difficult chapters of their lives or remembering what was difficult or what went wrong, you know, I'll go ahead and segue into the week to week because you guys have 10 of swords rooted down by two of wands in the first week of October. So what you're seeing is that um, you're getting so much inspiration and motivation from how you've been betrayed. I mean, let's just put it, let, let's call a spade a spade, Sagittarius, like, these betrayals and these people who have underestimated you, um, ultimately they've given you a wonderful gift because now you're coming more into alignment with your purpose by um, having to have a lot of time alone or having to have a lot of time um, experiencing those emotions. And, you know, it's kind of like an engine starting up is what I'm kind of getting psychically around that. Uh, something needed to ignite you know, the engine, something needed to give you an ignition into a purpose. And maybe that's what these betrayals are. You know, it's kind of, it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard situation to go through, but it's cool to see Sagittarius go from a place where maybe, you know, having that perfect, perfect relationship or having that, you know, um, kinship was maybe the center focus of their purpose. 
And now after maybe having relationship difficulties, it starts to eclipse out a bit. And what is now there is this incredible, you know, desire to serve humanity or this incredible desire to serve people in a way that's more uplifting than that was. And it's not to then rebuke the kinship or to rebuke relationships as a whole, because there's a danger of that too. Like Sagittarius can sort of get into a place where it's like, I will just never pursue relationships again, or I will just never be there again. And that's not really what this is about. But I like how maybe there's a more broad focus versus these like one-on-one -on -one connections that Sag that's very important to Sagittarius. You know, these like one-on-one -on -one romantic relationships or like best friend relationships or, you know, incredible collegiate relationships too, like colleagues. Um, those are like what really fuel Sagittarius. And I almost want to say those are what really fueled Sagittarius. I kind of want to put it into past tense because that feels to have changed and it's more broad. It's more collective. And this is kind of, again, preparing you for this Aquarian insight. So I know Sag is so hard for me not to go super far into the future and it's not here yet, you know, but it's coming on and I just want to prepare you. I want to give you guys that future insight that this feels to become much more broad and much more demographically inclusive and that's a very aquarian way to put it but i just wanted to um, open your eyes sagittarius that maybe there's a lot more people that can be benefited by your ideas or by your philosophies mm -hmm. than just that one person you're going to be in a relationship with or just that you know dating potential or just um you know that one business that you're creating so it's good for sagis to start preparing early to make things more broad okay and it's a process okay it's not going to happen tomorrow so sagittarius is also dealing with instant gratification first week of october you're coming into contact with all of these new ideas these new philosophies these new motivations and um also you can't just try to make it happen tomorrow like you've got to really work with the long the longevity of things that's what jupiter and capricorn tries to teach you and it's just gone direct and it's really getting prepared to start moving. So bit by bit, Sagittarius, block by block, goal by goal, task by task. Like it's not like, okay, I've got to have it right now, you know. Um, no instant gratification, but grand, grand, grand new ideas. It's really neat. Um, but any other things that I want to talk about when it comes to coping or healing from these betrayals, it feels like it's secondary. What do I mean? Um, I hate to break it to you, Sagittarius, but that person is probably not going to come back in and apologize. I hate to break it to you, Sagittarius, but if you've been betrayed, I don't sense the healing of that betrayal to come through a direct confrontation with the betrayer. Okay? That has to be... It's going to come secondary. So, like, as you are betrayed, you now write up a new agreement for your new business and you hit the print button and you have, like gold in your hands and it's like where one thing is taken another thing is given elsewhere this is again this is preparing us for that aquarian wave at the new year but it's good to start adjusting to this now you know you lose maybe you get a divorce and that marriage contract is void but then you print a new contract and you've got like this new business operating agreement or something and this is now something and it's like your own business and you're the only one who's um, liable for it and it's like your own new sense of power you're holding in your hands but it's not a new marriage certificate okay it's not the new marriage it's not getting back with somebody it's not you know um, getting married it's somewhere else it's in a different sector of life but it's connected karmically so this is like cool um, but this is it's just important for Sagittarius to understand that there are weird roundabout solutions to old problems okay week number two you guys have two of cups rooted down by King of Swords. So um, you're already getting better. And you might meet somebody. Weird. Second week of October. I know I'm, I'm kind of talking about how you, you don't want relationships to be like the sole focus. But as those things become less focused, they become more possible and they can breathe. You know, they're not smothered. So it becomes, you know, the fire can actually ignite. Um, but you have to be decisive. You have to be clear-minded about new relationship potentials. You know, you've got to choose wisely. You've got to understand that your love language might be changing. And this absolutely might very well just be a new relationship with yourself. You know, no longer are you feeling insatiable. No longer are you feeling desperate. No longer are you feeling like, oh my God, I'll never find love. And because of that, you um, love yourself more and you start to blossom. You start to make more. You start to get more promotions. You start to, you know, gain esteem or prestige in society. I could see that for Sagittarius, you know, coming up over the next year or two. Um, and you start to just feel better. You start to feel more 
in your power, you know? Uh, so regardless, again, of whether it's a relationship with someone else or a relationship with yourself, um, it's good, okay? Whatever connectivity is happening in the second week of October is good. Uh, pay attention to it. Really process it consciously. What I will say is it's not really a matter of just letting things be what they be. It's not really let go and let God, although I always recommend that. But it feels like you're really choosing, you're really picking, you're really um, making deliberate choices. You're not just like accepting whatever you get. That's, I think that that's really the key to Sagittarius being successful during a Jupiter and Capricorn year. It's not just accepting whatever you get. It's being a very, very deliberate and decisive about what you want and then taking it, you know, in an integrity-based way, of course, because integrity is also challenged for Sagittarius in the year of 2020. Um, so you have to make it as integral as, as possible, as integrity-based as possible. Week number four, sorry, week number three, Sagittarius. Four of Wands rooted down by three of Pentacles. An interesting chronological order. I, I always like it. Okay, and we've actually got a lot of this. I always like it when the number in the tarot matches up with the week. So in the second week, you had two of cups. And in the third week, you had three of Pentacles. So you're doing something right. There's something that clicks in the first week of October. And second, third, and fourth week are all a progression of more so the right territory. So I just want to validate for you, Sagittarius, that you're momentum is right, especially if you're listening to this after the first week of October. So like second, third, fourth week of October, if you're listening to this reading, it's right. What you're doing is right. Don't worry too much about it. Let this be. But specifically about the third week, celebrate it, you know, have fun with it. Enjoy this prosperity because the prosperity that you have right now might be quite temporary because uh, I do feel Sagittarius is really changing the game. Um, and you might have to take new risks in 2021 and you might have to, you know, um, just really dip in in a different way. But this feels predictable. This third week of October, what you're getting here, it feels safe. It feels stable. It feels secure. It feels like um, maybe it has taken a village to get this far and maybe it would be good to throw, you know, um, a party or something. Or maybe it would be good to um, celebrate or ritualize the success that you've gotten just to, you know, click it into your own mind. Like, I'm a Sagittarius and I've come this far, you know? Don't be afraid to reach out to people. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to um, bring in assistance. You know, if you're a business owner, new employees, new advisors, new people to help you build this incredible thing is, is nothing wrong with that, okay? Week number four, you have Page of Swords rooted down by Page of Cups. You know, new beginnings, new people coming in. It's funny how this works, isn't it, Sag? You, you start focusing less on other people and they start to come in. Um, you've got very smart people coming in, okay? Very intelligent, intellectual people coming into your life in the fourth week. Um, and then also quite emotional people. So it's kind of maybe not exactly what you've wanted because I feel like you want more of a page of wands energy. You want that like fiery kinship. Like you still want that, but that's not really it. You're getting more so the watery, airy type of people coming in, um, more so dry people, more so people who are not, um, you know, maybe as convicted by their passion, okay? And there's something for a Sag to learn from that because you guys are convicted by your passion. You know, it's not positive, it's not negative, it, it is what it is, but your passion and your motivation and your purpose is what rules you as a Sagittarius. So you're coming into contact with people who that's not the case with, you know, maybe you're more status quo, you know, nine to five type of people. And then also you're more like, um, you know, people who are ruled by their emotions, more lunar types of people. And, you know, that's okay. It's like giving you a very, you're getting a very like diverse range of uh, energies coming into your life in the fourth week. And, and that should be something that a Sag enjoys, you know. Um, important to notice how picky you've become or how um, deliberate you are becoming, because that's not bad, but it's important to notice. Um, so fourth week, it's not that substantial. It's not that huge, but it's different to see these types of people coming in for you. So anyway, Sages, um, I'm going to go ahead and conclude your general reading on that note. I am going to put together an extended reading on Patreon. We'll get a central theme and two supporting themes, and we'll look more into these people as well as um, overcoming any betrayal and getting more independent and strong. We'll look into that in the extended. Um, and Patreon is a great service because I do weekly tea chats over there. Um, I talk about every week ahead. I do viewer requests and extended early and ad free readings. And it's a very, it's a very good value to get all of that, you know, 
Um, so you can click in the center of your screen now to uh, check it out and see if it's interesting to you. And I would just love to have you guys over there. Um, our community is incredible. We also have a Discord, which is free. You know, you can just join the Discord and, and engage in conversation about these types of topics. I have new merch as well, trying to make something for everybody. You know, I know everybody likes to support in different ways. So that'll be below too. And thank you so much, Sages. You can click the center of the screen to jump over to Patreon for your extended now. I will talk to you later. Bye.